Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, in this short video I'm going to look at front feeding thicker papers to this the Epson P700. Now this applies similarly to the Epson P900 as well because the two printers are very similar. Um, cut one in half, stretch it and you've got the other almost. Certainly from a profiling and print quality point of view, they are identical. So profiles I've built for the P700 work fine on the P900. Um, I'm going to use the front feed here, even though during most of the testing uh, that I did, I used the top feed for art papers. And I would say that uh, if the top feed works well, and I didn't have any problems with it, use that. But I can't test every paper. Some papers are thicker than others. And I did use poster board via the front feed, but that's a separate setting. So poster board is one thing, but paper is another. I've also looked at using um, photo papers where you want to get rid of potential marks on the surface of the material. So there's a way of feeding paper in here. You have to have large margins, but if you get the dreaded pizza wheel effect on glossier papers, then you can use the front feed. But this is just using the front feed for an art paper. Now, I'm going to print uh, an image and the paper I'm going to use is a 305 gram uh, one from Photospeed. This is their uh, Platinum Cotton 305 paper. Very nice paper. Um, I've used it for, I've got a profile for it. It doesn't necessarily need to go through this, uh, through the slot at the front here. The back is usually fine, but I'll do the front just to show the different way that you feed the paper. Really nothing to it. Uh, if you find one works better than the other. There is one caveat though for printing with the front here. The paper has to go right the way through and then come back out. And that means the paper's gonna come out the back. And if you've got it here, as I have only a few inches from a wall, you're gonna get problems if you put an A3 plus sheet in. So I'm going to have to move the printer forward quite a bit. And even then, I need to check when the paper comes out that it doesn't bang against the wall because it will do that. Uh, let's just load the front here. Don't need to lift this up. The printer's switched on. Now I'm using the Epson print layout software. Um, I, I've opened uh, an image here uh, in Photoshop. This is a scene that was taken on beach at, Can at Cannon Beach on Oregon coast. A it's around sunset, there's a mist coming in, it's very low key, um, I suppose it's a high key, it's a bright image, but it's the low contrast I should say. Uh, the mist, there's very faint colour, it works well on matte papers. Not all colour images work that well on matte papers, it's up to you to decide, but I've, I've looked at that elsewhere. But anyway, uh, here we go, there's this image. Now I'm going to print this from Epson print layout. Now, I've set on Epson print layout here, the type of image, you can load the image directly, but I've set it. Um, I've set paper type to Epson Ultra Smooth Fine Art. I've set the uh, paper source to front thick paper. This isn't an incredibly thick paper, but it's thicker than just normal photo paper. I've set the type as Epson Ultra Smooth Fine Art, that's fair enough. I've set the quality to maximum quality, doesn't make much difference on this. Um, I have looked at quality settings. There are only two quality settings for the uh, for, uh, this type of paper. Um, more to the point, I've picked a printer profile. Now, um, I've selected the one I've created for this particular paper. Now it says it's receiving data. Uh, it says paper out in the front feeder. So I haven't set this up. I'm just waiting for the printer to tell me what to do. It says load uh, thick paper and it has some graphics on it. So let's just pull this out here. And I'm gonna set this to A3 plus at the uh, width settings here. Here's the paper. Um, with papers like this, whatever you do, always check if they've been in the box for a while that there's not any pronounced curl because curl is what will get you head uh, strikes. Head strikes make marks on a print and ruin a print, but more to the point, they don't do the printer any good. So it's giving me instructions here to do it. Load paper with the printable side up, which is what we're doing. We'll push that there and push it through Push. 
and I line it up with a mark here. There's a small mark embossed on the plastic here. Um, you should be able to see it. Uh, we don't need to get it ultra, but it will align it. So everything is set there. Um, I'll just say that that's complete. It's now going to load the paper and this is where I need to check out the back to see what happens because the paper is already poking out the back of the printer. This is where we move everything forward a bit. In testing printers before, I have had paper shoot right through and bang against the wall and it comes out at a fair old rate. And stiff paper like this, it, um, it, well, it won't damage your wall, but it won't do the paper any good. Paper type, it says velvet fine art here. I don't want velvet fine art, I want more paper types. It's a fine art paper. Um, I'm gonna pick Epson Ultra Smooth Fine Art Paper because that's the paper I setting, the media setting I used when I created this profile. So we'll go for that. That set, A3 size is set, okay. And hopefully it should just load in and print. In it goes. Folded down the back, the weight took it down. It didn't quite touch, didn't quite touch the wall. It went down like that. If this had been a stiffer paper, it would have hit the wall even at this distance. I've got between the back here. Uh, close the front feeder. And we're going to pull the paper tray out here and uh, it prints as normal. Printer making various noises as printers do. Fortunately, as I've said, well, this one, one of the bits I like this, there's a light so I can look in the top and I can see the image is printing perfectly well. Now, tells me I've got nine minutes left. Now, it actually says uh, 26 by 17. That's because this is an image I've uh, produced for printing on A2 paper. Now, I've printed it directly here onto via, uh, via Epson print layout, and I've not resized it. In fact, if I look here, it says resolution at print size, 459 pixels per inch. If you think I should have took that down to 300 or some other magic number, Think again. I did a video recently, and there's an article as well, that looks at various print settings. Um, now, I know on this paper, it doesn't make much difference between the maximum and the standard settings on that, but certainly on the luster paper that I tested there, uh, the results of that testing says, use plenty of print resolution if you've got it, but don't bother going for the absolute highest print quality settings. Now that's for a luster paper, not quite the same for an art paper like this. But anyway, paper's coming through. I can see it going back into the printer at the back here. And uh, we should get a picture before long. The uh, print's coming out. Now, there's very pale color in this image. And I know from experience printing it before, um, I've picked the relative colorimetric rendering intent on the settings here. Uh, you can switch between relative colorimetric and perceptual. There is no best for it. Um, pick whatever looks best in the preview you get here. Now, I know that if I print this relative colorimetric, it comes out slightly darker uh, and the colors come out, the colors that there are come out slightly more visible. And um, this is one of those bits where you, where experience tells you how different types of images will print. Yes, you can rely on self, soft proofing to some extent, but um, I personally prefer to actually rely on experience and a bit of experimentation. Um, now, you might want to get it right first time and not like the idea of experimenting and adjusting things. Well, fair enough, there are various ways of approaching this, but I'm, I prefer for a picture like this that has to get just the right feel to it uh, to, to print it out this way. And um, I did say, uh, make sure black point compensation is set here. Um, otherwise, you can get uh, prints that just don't look right. Uh, it, 
Black point compensation, I won't go into the details of it, but it allows for the difference uh, when profiling between different rendering intents. You don't necessarily need it normally for perceptual because it's built into the perceptual rendering intent. Relative colorimetric, it may not be. So try it and see. Um, I've never found a use for not setting it when it was available, but um, here comes the print, looks very nice. Um, Tells me I've still got four minutes there. Just check, there's the picture. You get a little preview on the screen that tells you what it looks like. Give me details. Says that uh, it's A3, it, it, you can check this. This information is kept in the printer whilst it's powered on. And you can do a check at some point and do it and print what all the settings and things you've done. It, isn't a proper accounting system really, but it's good for checking if you're not sure what prints you've made recently, what settings you've used. You can always just go back and check this. Let me just go back to the main display there. Uh, you'll notice, uh, well, I'll, I'll take it if you can't see it. Um, I'm running this with both the gray and the light cyan inks uh, warning me as being very low. Um, the inks will indicate low for quite a while, you will get increasingly desperate warnings from the printer about it thinking it's not got enough ink. And then finally, it will just go, no, I'm not printing, or no, um, it will stop during a print. Now, some people have said you can swap cartridges uh, if it stops in the middle of a print. I found that some papers, particularly luster papers, you end up with a very slight mark on the print from where the ink has changed, where basically the paper, everything is paused, you've changed the ink and it's carried on. Um, I'd rather not do that. I wait until I've had a few desperate warnings from the, they're saying there may not be enough ink a couple of times, then I'll change it. Yes, I may be wasting a few droplets of ink, but compare that with the price of a nice piece of paper. Um, is it worth it? I say no. Um, some people are rather more tight-fisted than others. Oh, here's the print, and it's come out, and um, it's come out rather well. But it's a good printer. I know I've printed this image from the top. There's no reason it shouldn't. Um, the whole idea is the more familiar you get with a printer, uh, the easier it should be for you to get a print that you like first time with no problems. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm going to do a few more uh, specific things connected with some of the printers I've got for testing. If you've got any questions, please do ask in the uh, uh, comments for the video. And if you find this stuff interesting, please subscribe to the channel. It's appreciated. So thank you very much.